In this video, we're going to look at the effect of prevalence on the positive predictive value. So we'll start with where the prevalence of a disease is about 0.2% and then it's about 20%. What prevalence means is um, how common the disease is in a particular population, such as some diseases are more common in uh, healthcare workers or people who uh, in, uh, yeah, in, in inject drugs or um, or uh, people of a particular age group etc so we're just going to take everything's going to be the same for both questions the only thing that will change is that the prevalence will go from 0.2% to 20% and we'll look at the effect on the positive predictive value meaning we'll look at the effect on um, if you test positive what is the chances that that test was actually correct? And just give you an idea for why doctors like to pre-screen patients before they give them a, the test. They like to try and figure out if they have any of the symptoms of the disease and look at their family history and everything and then give them a test. So they don't get a whole bunch of false uh, false positives, right? So we'll, we'll see that now. So in example six, just like you to fill this out as if, if possible as quick as you can. So we have a prevalence of about 0.2% in the general population in the country for Crohn's disease. That's an intestinal disease. Um, so um, what does this mean? Prevalence means how common it is. About 0.2% of the population have the disease. If we're going to randomly select 10,000 people and just give them this Crohn's disease test and see what happens, right? So if we randomly select people from the general population, we know that about 0.2% of them will have the disease. So we'll have how many people with the disease and how many people without. Can you fill in these two blanks? Okay, I'll help you out. So we'll have 0.2% of 10,000 with the disease. Okay, what does that make? 0.2%? Point zero zero two times ten thousand right zero point zero zero two times ten thousand which makes twenty people with the disease and then of course ninety nine point eight percent of people of the people about will not have the disease right so point nine nine eight times ten thousand plug that in your calculator and what do you get 900, uh, sorry, uh, 9,980, right? So, from the sample of people, about 20 of them will have the disease, we know that, about 9,980 will not, right? How many of these 20 are going to test positive? How many are going to test negative? Can you figure that out? Press pause and do that really quickly. Okay, I'm going to do it now. So, to do to figure that out what we need is the sensitivity the sensitivity of this test is 80% okay which means that 80% of um, eighty percent of the people who actually have the disease are going to test positive right And 80% of 20, of course, is 0 0.80 times 20, which is 16, right? So 16 of these 20 are going to test positive. And, of course, 20% of them are going to test negative, even though they have the disease. 20% of 20 gives 4, right? Fill this column in. Out of the people that don't have the disease, what percentage are going to test um, negative? So, just so you know, I, I got this from here. So, um, taking the all these people who don't have the disease, what percentage of them are they actually going to show that that the disease is absent? Any idea? 
Well, to do that, you got to use the specificity of 90%. Okay? 90% of the people who actually don't have it, it's going to detect that. It's going to detect the absence in 90% of these people, right? So, 0 0.9 times 9980, and we get 8982. Okay, and that number goes here, right? Okay, and so how many people who don't have the disease will actually test positive? 10% of the people that don't have the disease, 9980. Okay, which equals what? 998, right? So, we've used sensitivity and specificity before. We fill in the table. Now we'll do our totals. How many people all together are going to test positive? Add these together, right? These are the true positives. These are the false positives. Right? So this plus this. 1014. And from this we can calculate the positive um, predictive value, right? Or PPV, which equals the true positives, right? People who tested positive, the true positives, um, so the people who tested positive who, who um, actually have the disease over all the people that tested positive that all the people that tested positive period right so the true positives over all who tested positive okay so this is going to be the the false positives included, right? These guys are false. This is a false. They don't have the disease that tested positive. They're false positives. So you could say it's the true positives over the true positives plus the false positives, right? Okay? And so, of course, that is. 16, 16 people who are actually true positives out of a total of 1,014 people and these are all the people that tested positive altogether. So what does that give us? So 16 out of 1014 gives us 0 0.01577 round that to a decimal a percentage with one decimal place 1.6 percent okay what does that mean crazily if you um, if you test positive, if you're from the general US population, you take this Crohn's test. This Crohn's test comes out positive. The chances are you're among this group here. You're among the false positives, right? Not among the true positives. Because you're from the general US population, you don't have any symptoms of Crohn's, there's no reason to suspect you have this disease, you really shouldn't have been given the test in the first place. I mean, the, most likely, you're going to be one of the false positives. You're going to be one of the, uh, the chances of you having the disease 
is 1.6 percent okay so that's why people need to be screened before they're tested you don't just randomly test general population for diseases usually because it creates things like this so before we do the NPV we're going to do everything we just did with this question with seven so we can give a clear comparison of what's going on right so go to example seven and do everything just like the last question only different numbers right so the only difference is the prevalence is going to be 20 percent okay so please press pause and do the whole thing and then check the video and see if you got the same answer okay so hopefully you've figured out that 20 the prevalence is 20 percent meaning that um, with this at risk population um, 20 percent of the people have the disease um, and this is you know poor diet smoking family history depending on what age you are there's a lot of factors that increase your risk of having Crohn's disease so if we take 10,000 of these particular people that actually have the symptoms of it and are at risk of it uh, that's a totally different situation than taking 10,000 uh, regular random children and and uh, all sorts of people from the population okay so in any case Two, th you would expect two thousand of these people to have it, and eight thousand to not have it. Okay. Now, don't forget, this is the same test. You see, so the sensitivity is eighty percent, and the specificity is the ninety percent. So, out of this two thousand, how many have the disease? How many do not? Can you press pause and try that? Okay. I hope you press pause and try it. I'm going to do it really quickly. For this, we need the sensitivity, which is 80%. And so, since it if it t is calculated from this column, and sensitivity says 80% of those who actually have the disease will test positive. 80% of 2,000 is. 1600 so 1600 1600 of these people who actually have the disease will test positive and the rest 400 will test negative okay now can we figure out these two cells what are you going to need press pause and do this this column you're going to need the specificity of 90% so when we're figuring out this column we use specificity what does that mean it means if you take the 8,000 people who actually definitely don't have the disease specificity of 90% means that 90% of these 8,000 will in fact test negative okay 90% of 8,000 is 7,200 okay so specificity goes here sensitivity goes up here that's where 1600 came from right and what's left what's left is the 800 people who 800 people who don't have the disease who, who end up testing positive okay so can you give the total here how many people altogether tested positive and then give the positive predictive value press pause and do that and see what you get okay I'll do it now so if I add these two things together I get 2400 the positive predictive value is percentage if you take the people who tested positive it is the the true positives over all who tested positives or the true positives over the true positives plus the false positives right so the true positives over all who tested positive in other words 1600 are true positives right because they test positive they have the disease they're true positives so that's 1600 
out of all the positives. These are false positives here, of course. These 800 test positive, but they actually don't have the disease. So 1,600 out of 2,400, and what does that give? It gives 0 0.666, etc. Round that to a percentage with one decimal place, and what do you get? So you get 66 point, and then round up, 7%. So positive predictive value in this case is 66.7%. What does that mean? It means if you are from the at-risk population, you have some of the symptoms of Crohn's disease, you have irritable bowel, you have poor diet, smoking, you smoke, you got poor family history with the disease, um, you're in the at-risk age group, um, it means that if you take this test, you probably do have the disease. That's a 66.7% chance that you do have the disease. And that's a lot higher than earlier, 1.6%. Okay. So this is why there's such a thing as pre-screening, because just to, to, to show you again, general population, if you just walked into a doctor's office, took a Crohn's disease test, you know, with with no symptoms, no reason that you might have Crohn's, you may well, uh, and you tested positive, and then it, and it tested positive. That the chances are it's it's a false test, right? It's a false result. However, if you do have symptoms of disease, etc., and you walk in and you take the test, the chances are that you know it is true that you do actually have it. Okay. So what is the negative predictive value for each one? Do the NVP for example 6, or the NPV negative predictive value for example 6 and example 7, and compare them. Okay, I hope you've tried it. Press pause and try it. I'm going to do it now. So negative predictive value is if we take the total who tested negative, that's 8,986. So we're going to take the um, people who have the disease, there's four and they test negative. These guys are false, right? False result. This is a false negative. And this is people who don't have the disease and tested negative. This is a true result. This is a true negative, right? So the negative predictive value is the true negatives, the people who test negative, out of all negatives. In other words, true negatives out of false plus true. True plus false negatives, right? So it is 8982 out of these two things combined, 8986. What does that give? Zero point nine 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 five or ninety nine point nine and that goes on nine six percent is negative predictive value and f so this is for the um, population that's not at risk of Crohn's. My goodness, if you test negative, almost certainly that's true. That's almost 100%, okay? Whereas, if you're from the at-risk population and the test says negative, what does that mean? Well, let's have a look. To get the negative predictive value, we need the true negatives over all negatives. And again, um, you, this is people that have the disease that tested negative. These are false negatives, right? These are people that don't have disease that tested negative. These are true negatives. And so all negatives would be, add these together, 7,600, right? 
So true negatives are 7,200 people out of this group that um, test negative that really don't have it. Out of 7,600 people that test negative, uh, period, right? So 7200 divided by 7600 and we get 0 0.947 etc or approximately 94.7 percent okay so if you happen to be at risk for Crohn's disease and you go and get a test this test and this test comes out negative and a good chance that it's true you don't actually have it of course with the general population if you took the Crohn's disease test and it came out negative it's almost absolute almost a hundred percent sure that that's a fact okay